Hello, what? Yes? Yes, I found a bookcase that sits in front of. No, I don't have my books arranged in colour order. Yes, I've got a doorway. No, I don't have an antique deck to bang my hands on. Okay, right, see you in a minute. Hey everyone, welcome back. I hope you're doing well. So, I have to apologise first to the caravan nut, to uh, Martin, because he volunteered me to do these questions two more months ago, right at the beginning of lockdown. So thanks for, <laughs> so thanks for asking me, Martin, and I finally got round to giving some of the answers. Hopefully the answers will explain why. Anyway, this was supposed to be an interview, but I seem to have lost my interviewers, so I've got my trusty book, and here we go with question number one. How much TP do we have? Well, this is convenient. We're sat next to the bookcase and we have an entire row of uh, TP, Terry Pratchett. And in fact, behind the front row, there is a second row in here. So we've got the full collection. Oh, hang on a minute, I'll be back. So apparently not that type of TP. In fact, we have three rolls in use and five waiting. Now, next question, where are we currently parked? Let's go and find out. Oh, cheers, that's better. So, next question, uh, where are we currently parked? We are parked here on the drive to the house. We're lucky enough to just about have enough room to squeeze caravan in. Actually, that was one of the things that kind of drove the decision because I knew I'd be doing short trips. I wanted to get a caravan that I could keep at home. And uh, Mike, my husband, dad on a mission is here all the time. So there's no security issue because when we're away with the caravan, he's in the house. So that's fine. Uh, but I had to get a very small one to get it to fit just on the drive over here. And it's been an absolute godsend to have uh, both of them here because I can come out and have a little cup of tea and a bit of peace and quiet when I need to, either here or in the caravan where I've done a couple of sleepovers. So that's great. So next question, what has been the biggest change since lockdown? And of course, we've got two boys doing school at home now. It's not proper homeschooling, of course, because we're not having to make the curriculum up as we go along. Uh, it did take the, both of their schools a little bit of time to get organised, understandably. Um, so to keep them busy, we did give them a few challenges. And uh, we've been quite... Um, not strict, but we've been quite structured with their schooling. So, uh, you know, they work best where they've got a structure and they, they know what they need to do and they've got times. Uh, so we've given them blank timetables and we got them to set their own lessons into that so they felt they had some control at least. So hopefully that was the perfect uh, balance of um, them having their own control over their own time versus actually getting them structured and getting them thinking and, and helping them for the future because... You know, the, the younger one will end up going to seniors in the not too distant future. So he really needs to think about becoming much more self-governing and self-organized and that sort of thing. So fingers crossed that was actually quite useful. But of course, that's been absolute chaos in terms of the adults time in the house uh, because, you know, both boys need a bit of structure, a bit of support to get on with things. You know, they can't just sit down for half an hour and get on with something while we're trying to do something. And the type of work that I do requires me to be able to sit down for an hour, two hours at a time, to read something, to review something, to edit it. And picking it up and putting it down every five or ten minutes when they've got a question or they need some help uh, with something is just proved impossible. So it's been driving me absolutely bonkers trying to work and homeschool at the same time. So that's been a bit of a nightmare. Okay, next question. What have we gone without? Um time <laughs> you know in it, of course when when we do shopping or whatever there were shortages at the beginning of lockdown and in fact there still are shortages i haven't been able to buy any flour ever through the whole of this process and um, we do use it because uh, the youngest one really enjoys baking so we got through our flour, flour supplies fairly quickly um so maybe that's one thing we've gone without uh but in terms of food and that other stuff you know th there was always plenty of other things sure we couldn't get all the things that we were interested in you know Eggs were in shortage for a while, flour is still in shortage, as I said. Um, but, you know, we adapted, so it wasn't a major issue. But the big one is time. We've had no time whatsoever, and it's been incredibly frustrating to watch all these scenes of folks having a lovely day at the beach or whatever they've been doing. And 
you know, we've barely been able to do the work that we wanted to do. I guess maybe that's maybe that's accentuated by working for yourself because you know it. You know the whole pressure of of whether the enterprise succeeds is on you, and if you can't do it because you're trying to do something else, then that's the way it is. What are you most grateful for? Well, of course, we've got uh, parents around various parts of uh, the UK and abroad and grateful, of course, that they haven't picked up anything and grateful as well that uh, their neighbours have been uh, helping them out because that was that was a real pressure and a real stress early on uh, because we're several hours away from my mum, for example, and I couldn't get any delivery slots and all the rest of it for a long time. So I was quite worried about her because she's over there on her own. So thank you very much to her neighbours for, for sorting that out. Uh, and I guess the the one couple we know who have actually caught this virus are our neighbours because uh, she's a very senior nurse at the local hospital and picked it up reasonably early on. And thankfully they, they seem to get through it very easily. So that is good news. You know, I, mo I moan about not having enough time um, to do any of the, the sort of worky professional stuff I want to do. And I guess that's frustrating because I actually enjoy what I do. Uh, you know, if I hated it, then actually it would be a godsend, wouldn't it? But but I don't, you know, the reason I run the business is that I really enjoy what I do. And so on the, on the, the flip side of that, of course, you know, it has actually been really nice to have the boys home and to be working with them and seeing what they're studying and to be able to support them and help them out. So I, I am, despite the moaning about the time and the, the, the practical professional stress, you know, it, it has been very nice uh, to have them home and so I'm, I'm grateful for that opportunity. Also, and it's not lost on me that we've got a lot to be grateful for, is that house prices around here are eye-wateringly expensive. That's even before you even start to think about stamp duty. So I'm incredibly grateful that 20 odd years ago we actually chose what was then a realistically, I guess, two and a bit bedroomed house. Um, but we chose it for its enormous by town standards garden. And we've developed it bit by bit over that time. So we now have this glorious space. So that's another thing to be grateful for. Although the lack of time at the moment does mean it's a little bit neglected. Okay, a cup of tea and then the next question. Oh, that's nice. Oh, this bus is helpful. I love these chairs. You know, I haven't said much, but they're fantastically comfy. I'm sat here in an armchair, you know. <laughs> uh, so, next question. What do you miss the most? Well, apart from the time, obviously, <laughs> and the ability to, to make progress professionally with what I'm trying to do, then those that follow me on Twitter will probably know that I, I like to do archery. So, archery is, is my sport of choice, and I haven't done any of that. Uh, since the middle of March. In fact, it was a club indoor championships that I shot in in the middle of March and then that was the last time I got to do that. So, let's go and do some of that now. Okay, I've driven up the road to the range and here is another reason why owning a bus is totally brilliant. Here's my kit already set up on the trolley and my bow actually is already strung up on the back seat, uh, albeit without its various appendages. So I'll just get this lot out and then get set up and come back to you. Right, I've got my silly hat on and my various bits of protective gear, so let's give this a go. You guys head down to the target end. Uh, I've got the GoPro set up down there. I promise to try not to hit you. And clearly they're all over the place at the moment, but that's what happens when you're in the shop for four months. But at least by the end, we seem to be getting back to where we should be. Anyway, back to the questions. 
Well, gee whiz, that was hard work. Crikey, I thought I kept my muscles going, but <laughs> it was ridiculous. At least they seemed to come back towards the middle, towards the end. So, fingers crossed, we'll keep going. Now, archery has been back on, actually, since uh, the same time as fishing and, and tennis and those other socially distant sports. So, you know, it's pretty easy for us to social distance ourselves. Um, in fact, perhaps it's a bit easier because we just get a, a target each instead of having to share four to a target. And we're responsible for our own stuff. Uh, I guess the only problem for me, as a person slightly over five foot, is I can't actually reach to pin my target face on the target properly. So I have to put the thing flat on the floor, pin it on, and then put it up again, which is quite embarrassing. But anyway. Next question. How long since we were at a campsite? Well, months and months. It was the middle of February. Uh, we were at Chapel Lane for the NEC Caravan Show. So quite a long time. Although we did take part in the NHS sleep out. Well, I say we. We started off, but in fact the boys chickened out in the end. So I took part in the NHS Great British sleep out thing. And uh, had a couple of nights in the caravan. That was very nice, all on my own. Very quiet and peaceful. What is that now? Uh, next question. What is your favourite quarantine food? Um, I don't have one. I don't, I don't think we to switch anything. But I mean, sure, we switch stuff around uh, when supermarkets ran out of various things, but I don't think we ever got to the point where we thought we were on lockdown food. It was a bit difficult to get salad, actually, early on, wasn't it? And we st actually, we still can't get the salad I really like. But that's okay. We, you know, at least there's variety now, so we can try lots of different things, and that's fine. And actually, that's another good point. So... Um, We've got it. We've managed to get into a, a structure of the boys cooking, actually. So, one night a week, the oldest is the eldest is in charge, and another night a week, the youngest is in charge. And you know they're doing pretty well, so I'm quite impressed with them. So that, how are we exercising? Well, now of course, as all uh, good school children, we did have a go at this Joe Wick business first off. Uh, but I'm embarrassed to say my boys are particularly cynical. And uh, they decided that, that Joe Wick was a bit waffly for them. But anyway, we have this uh, cycling machine rowing thing, which uh, we've been doing that every day, including me. Although it doesn't seem to have had any effect yet, but uh, there we go. Anyway, let's go and have a look at that. Right, so that's our quarantine questions done. Um, and it has started raining. So thanks again to Martin for the nomination. Uh, we're supposed to nominate people and I suspect everybody has done this by now and I'm so late <laughs> so, If you haven't done it already, please join in. You know, it'd be great to know what how everybody else got on So if you're off camping soon, enjoy yourselves. Stay safe. Take it easy because it's been a while since we've all been out there Thanks again to Martin for the nomination and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye for now